to my channel. My name is Ariane Diaz and again welcome to my channel and this beautiful channel we talk about beauty, empowering ourselves, just getting more into our own being and who we are and just things that light me up and bring me joy and again um and this topic we're going to be talking about is empowerment so thank you and welcome honestly i'm a little bit like scared to be talking about this topic and i'm excited at the same time because i know that we're going to bring so much clarity in what it is in, in which aspects of our lives are we like being our own frenemy and the intention uh, with this video is to bring awareness to those parts in which we are being our worst enemy in a way and how uh, like when we do that it reflects on the relationships that we accept outside. And the first thing that I want to open up is on the definition of a frenemy. So I was looking up at the definition of a frenemy and it says something along the like of uh, being in a relationship with somebody that does not like you. That's my baby there. Um, but being in a relationship with somebody that does not like you. And when we are a frenemy of ourselves, it's kind of like, there's like two aspects of ourselves that are in opposition. So I'm just going to bring all of that into our awareness with this video. So let's begin. And I have some notes here because <laughs> I can go on and on and on uh, about this. So to move to move this topic a little bit further, I want us to think about what a frenemy is. Um, if you have dealt with a frenemy, then maybe you can start thinking about this. But for me, a frenemy is a person that doesn't like you, that wants to be friends with you for whatever reason, um, doesn't like you, uh, try to bring down your self-esteem, tries to bring you down, talks mean about you, talks about you in a negative way behind your back. Um, is constantly in a competition with you. Uh, what else? So in that realm, again, yeah, it's somebody that really is in a competition with you, whether they are conscious of it or not. Um, it's somebody that really wants to create harm and destruction to your being, whether they know it or not, whether it is emotionally, psychologically, even physically, you know, when it gets to the physical part, then obviously that's a clear sign, but usually frenemies are, are in the realm of like emotional relationships, especially when it comes to females, because we don't really have like that type of relationship where like we fight with with a girl and like I can be friends with you like that is like sacred your body is sacred and for somebody to try to cause physical harm for you I think as a woman that's like really a no-no and I say this because like usually I think men don't experience this when I was talking to my partner he has like his friends from childhood almost he says that some of the people that became his best friends they like fought each other when they were like younger um but that hasn't been my experience i treat my body very sacred and whoever tries to cause physical harm to me that's like no 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 okay so now that we're clear on that i want us to uh because we're talking about the frenemy within right um a frenemy within is when you chronically engage in negative self-talk so what do i mean by chronically engaging in negative self-talk is for example if there's a, a physical feature that you don't like about yourself because you because society because let's be clear on this it was most likely society that said that that feature 
sorry, that that feature was ugly and you adopted that belief system in which you think that you are ugly, then that's like a friend of me there. That's not your friend. <laughs> that's not your friend because you are engaging in destructive behavior towards yourself or non-loving, in this case, non-loving behavior towards yourself. And um, it's about like looking at that part and like, where does this come from? Where does this come from? Is it from society? Is it from my family? Is it from my community? And just try to uh, sit with it and have an honest conversation. And not only like have, have an honest conversation if it's willing to talk to you and to tell you where it's coming from, but really end in that type of relationship. And then that type of relationship with negative self-talk. And I say this because also let's get clear on one thing. I've noticed that certain people thrive on negativity. Like that was something that was like shocking to me because I am a person that really thrives in affirming loving actions. But some people just talking negative about themselves, then that like uh, like make them thrive and i'm not sure if that's like really real but it's just what i see in the external and i'm gonna give an example of this like for example um you see certain athletes coach i've seen like in movies for example or in certain documentaries i'm not really sure but i've seen in certain documentaries on how coaches uh certain athletic coaches speak to their athletes and sometimes they're um they're cursing at them and they're talking to them in a way that is like that wouldn't work with me <laughs> i'm not the person that you're gonna put my nervous system in fight or flight and i'm gonna do better i'm the type of person that i need a stable loving environment and a nurturing environment in order for me to thrive so i noticed that for example me having that thing that was telling me oh um, you know, talking like talking negative, that was not gonna help me. So I address that uh, front of me. <laughs> so just think about it and see if it resonates. If it doesn't, then just keep on moving. Um, step two is uncover why you allow frenemies. Ooh, so this is also the external, right? Um, okay. Oh. This is like a lot, but sometimes we allow frenemies or we allow this thought patterns in ourselves because we feel the need saving, like we can see them as a whole. We don't, we don't just see their harmful actions and behavior towards ourselves and we just tolerate them because we see how they can be better or we see their goodness like how they treat other people but we don't like but we disregard how they treat us and and like for me uncovering that was again like knowing for example the friend of me within was like realizing why i was entertaining these type of thoughts um these type of thoughts like how was that serving me and at some point they were serving me because i wanted to be in self-pity and i wanted to feel defeated and i wanted to feel like the underdog and blah 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 blah, blah right and then the external is when you have this uh, person and you know that they're you can peep their certain frenemy behavior but you still tolerate them and again this is chronic behavior this is not just a one time or two things because i do believe that sometimes we can have unconscious patterns where we can project those things to our friends and and like like if a friend I, I i 
thank God I have friends that they are able to tell me like, hey, that was weird. But if it's a chronic thing, then you know, like, it's like I see you and I don't have to put up with this and I don't have to tolerate this because this is really harmful to me. And if it's like with words, this is harmful to my psyche, my psychology, my thought pattern. And unfortunately, you know, <laughs> because sometimes you, you don't have the capacity to be in relationships with those type of people. And that's just what it is. Um, number three, and I'm going to call this a friend of me. Number three, and I'm going to call this a frenemy of the self, is people-pleasing tendencies. This was a huge pattern for most of my 20s. I lived trying and trying and trying to please other people because my nervous system was dysregulated. I didn't know how to be upfront and confrontational. I did not know... Um, how to express my needs without without being fearful and without feeling safe of the backlash that sometimes telling no to somebody um, gets you or like their reaction. So that's to me a friend of me, <laughs> the friend of me within. Like if you, if you are not set in your no and you sabotage yourself into saying yes because you want to please another person because you want to meet their needs and because you know that's going to make them happy and that's a friend of me right because like let's say you have a friend <laughs> and a friend you you have to tell no to your friend for a certain reason let's say a medical reason or just you just don't feel like uh doing what they're requiring you to do when they give you that backlash like without understanding or without knowing where you're coming from or without considering your needs and who you are like we have to think about that <laughs> um and again we just compromise in our own needs sometimes our own basic needs um, to keep other to keep other uh, to keep others happy uh, leads to resentment and like that's a friend like when we compromise ourselves for other people we are not being good friends to we're not even being a good friend to us like come on <laughs> and we have to just um, think about those ways that work that we're that we're that we keep on doing that because of other people and um, that are not really uh, like serving us. And I'll give you guys an example. I had a brand and th oh my God, thank the Lord that um, I've been able to do better. And again, this is an ongoing process, guys. If you are just on the beginning journey of like healing your front of me and just like doing like bringing out the love from within because it love from within for yourself it's a journey and it's a journey it almost feels like a fitness journey <laughs> so um sometimes you're not gonna do it because it's too much for you to do and sometimes you're gonna do it because you feel empowered but just know that it's a process and you're gonna have more chances to practice um bringing out the love for yourself and practice uh just becoming more of who you truly are okay yeah and i'm like i'm gonna give you guys an example of how this played out for me so recently i had a brand reach out to me because they wanted me to create a user generated video and lately i've been getting more into user generated videos and like how to honor my creativity how to bring self-worth to my creativity and i've been feeling like a lot of anger <laughs> to be honest because i've but I've just been giving so much of my creativity away without value and I've been learning like about contracts and perpetuity and how these companies use these videos and things like that and I understand of course they're a business 
that um, they have they operate certain differently and stuff like that. But going back to this brand that was reaching out to me, they wanted me to create a user generated video, and I'm on my leg. Ah, this is what I charge, and we're going back and forth and stuff like that. And this is I set up a price, and this is how you know I'm still working on it. But I I set up a price, and and they were like they were honest. I love that they were like. Um, you know, that's a little, that's like high for us, but this is what we can offer and this is what we were required. But just going back and forth with the brand, before I would have just been happy, happy that they reached out to me, happy that they wanted to work with me without considering the, the amount of work that it takes to create these videos. Hey, so I'm back. I had to take care of the baby. But as I was mentioning, before I would have been happy just uh, to work on the video because honestly, there is so much joy in creating the videos that I create. It really comes from a part of me that is authentic and is joyful. And there was, I feel like that there was an artist wound or a creator wound in that regards because... It was the self-worth and the self-value. Like, um, I realized how, of course, because when you're in the flow state of creating, you kind of like lose track of time. But when you center yourself and you realize, like, I'm human. This is where I'm at. I live in a capitalistic society. And in order for me to live in this capitalistic society, I have to earn money from the work that I do and when I finally came into that conclusion and I I even worked out um like a business plan and I worked out how much I wanted to charge per hour with my designs and all of that I realized I was like wow <laughs> there's so much work to do there and the reason why I mentioned the brand deal and again it's nothing to do with the brand because um they're doing their part, but it was more like, can I afford truly to be working for this amount of time? Especially, you know, with all these factors. And then I realized, like with this brand, there's still an ongoing negotiation and I would love to pursue a relationship with them because I believe in what they bring out. Um, I like what they bring out. Um, but just thinking back, um, uh, and how, like, all of this prior, because I've been creating content for years now, all of this prior, it was because I was truly not valuing the work that I was doing because it was coming from a place of love and from a place of, like, that it really genuine springs brings me joy and I did not believe that something like work could be something like that all right so right there I'll show you how I was being my own enemy <laughs> and I don't want you to do that <laughs> I mean sometimes you just have to go through it because I believe that the best experience is the one that you can experience yourself and not the one that other people tell you like sometimes yeah it's true it, like it's you can get gems from other people but this is life and we are here and a lot of lessons we're gonna have to go through the journey on our own like we can prepare for it we can have people like myself like just i've walked through that path this is what you have to look out for but you're still gonna have to walk the path yourself okay so we're going to go and i'm gonna speak on this i'm gonna uh, i spoke on it previously but <sighs> letting go of the savior complex um and i realized that i was being my own enemy in a way when i was trying to uh save people from themselves 
as a, as a very observant person that I am, I am able to observe people in social settings and see how they're, that sometimes how they can be self-sabotaging. And I just, again, I just see their, beyond their harmful behavior and I can see how they can be doing better. And I would like try to save them. And sometimes uh, that um, wasn't good for me because sometimes it will be against my own well-being and how this shows up externally like there was a lot of times um i have really good friends like right now i'm really centered on who i am and i love the friendships that i have and all but there was a period of a time in my 20s when i would see people that were engaging in harmful behaviors and I would try to like assist them and if, uh, like some of them naturally wanted to become my friend but I knew I was like like I know now that from my friendships m one of my requirements is death I can't do no surf like surface level friendships if we're gonna be like close if you're an acquaintance that's fine but a friendship for me requires much more than surface level interactions and like um what would happen is for me in those situations it's like you know I will offer them a lot of things with love and naturally they will want to be my friend and because I did not know how to place that boundary and how to tell them like yeah like of course I, I want you to do good and I want you to be better like I want you um I, I, like I understand you I empathize with you and all of that however I don't think we can be friends because there's level of requirements that I require from a friendship that I that I see that you're not gonna offer. So I just knew that it was it just wasn't gonna go any further. And sometimes that will cause a lot of um, not so good interaction from from people. I've realized that it's really hurtful for other people to hear no or when you express a boundary I myself have went through that and the reason why I now understand why it's so hard for some people to um to look at it no is because we ourselves oftentimes do not have boundaries with what we allow and what we, what, what we won't allow from other people. And what a revelation that was when I completely understood what was happening. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, letting go of the savior complex, uh, realizing how, like, sometimes, and it's a very humbling experience, but it's also empowering as well how we sometimes we can't um help other people because in helping them it will be detrimental to us and it is important for us to um get to know ourselves enough when helping another person will be detrimental to our well-being i hope you understood that um the next one is confronting passive aggressive comments <laughs> I noticed that we can be our own worst critics. In fact, we are our worst critic. And the criticism from yourself hits the most if you accept that. So it's not saying that you don't hold yourself accountable. It's not saying that you are not truthful with yourself where you know that you need to work. It's saying, for example, I'm gonna go very superficial, which is in the physical level, but um, for example, no, uh, yeah, uh, you don't like yourself because of the way, of, because of your weight for some reason, and um, it's fine for you to feel like that. However, is you being negative, like it's you being mean to yourself going to help you, or are you talking to yourself in a compassionate, loving way is going to help you better. And I've noticed that me being passive aggressive with myself was not going to help me move towards healing because what I needed in that moment was to be compassionate with myself and loving with myself. 
as I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if this works out for everybody because, again, I've noticed this pattern with some people where, you know, when they talk to themselves and they're mean to themselves, it kind of gets them out of a rut. And I can see how sometimes that can help. But again, we're talking about the self and I'm talking from my experience. From my experience, every single time that I was just mean, hurtful, mean hurtful just disgusting with myself it wasn't helpful but when i acknowledge the fact like this is where i'm at this is who i am right now this is what i'm experiencing right now i don't want to continue to keep experiencing like this when i brought in or when i received or when i brought out the energy of compassion and love and kindness it just helps me like change my consciousness and actually um manifest and move to what i ex wanted to experience out of life and you know externally how this happened in front of me relationships is like passive aggressive comments for example <laughs> i had this person uh i didn't really know this person but she was dating somebody um she was dating somebody she was dating a friend of my partner and she once came into my home she's never met me in real life she just used to see what i used to post on, show, on social media and before i used to post like makeup photos and things like that and the first thing out of her mouth like imagine how i felt i don't know this person but the first thing out of her mouth was like wow she said it in spanish and i was saying in spanish and then i was saying in english but she was like wow pero tu no brillas tanto and you know this is me like rephrasing but it was along this line like wow pero tu no brillas uh, tu no brillas tanto en persona como tu brillas en las redes sociales and it was something along the lines like oh you don't shine as much as you shine in social media and i was like <laughs> now that i'm back then i gave it back to her because first of all i don't know you <laughs> I don't know you. Um, second of all, I'm just getting to know you and the first thing out of your mouth is this. And um, this is somebody that later on wanted to become my friend and I just couldn't see past the f fact that I knew that she didn't like me. I don't think she was conscious of the fact that she didn't like me. And um, yeah, I, I like she was conscious of the fact that she didn't like me, but she wanted to be in proximity of me. God knows why and like i tried because i didn't know any better like i'm a very loving person and again i try to understand where people I'm com are coming from but i became conscious of the fact that she didn't like me and she still wanted to be in proximity to me but it would have been harmful if i kept her in proximity to me knowing that she didn't like me because unconsciously she was going to kept acting in these ways that were going to be harmful to me and my aura and my being with her snarky little comments does it make sense <laughs> and yeah the last thing that i want to say how to stop being your uh own friend of me is to stop dimming your light mm, i really want to ground for this one i really do want to ground <sighs> But the gifts that the universe, God, the creator, the omnipresent force that has given you is your light, your talents, what you're here for, what you're here to do the work. And for many years, I felt like I wasn't in my purpose, but the reason why I felt I wasn't in my purpose was because I kept dimming my light because I was, I, 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 I'm going to take full responsibility. I was too worried about the people that I make uncomfortable and that people don't like me. Instead of being, being with or for putting my energy to the people that are going to benefit from this videos the people that are going to be benefited from my work the people that are going to be benefited from listening to what i have to say and i realized that the reason was 
because I was afraid. It was fear. It was fear of criticism, of their criticism. Why? Because I didn't have a strong sense of self. It was fear of being seen. It was fear of people seeing my blind spots and that I am human, essentially. It was fear of all of that. But when you embrace all of what you are and you reclaim that, you be in your power. So when you um, dim your light for those that don't like you, I say you're being your own frenemy because what do frenemies do? They don't want you to shine. They don't want you to be you. They want to bring you down. They want to destroy you. They want to talk negative about you. And when we dim our lights, that's what we're doing. And I'm gonna finish this video by saying that it's all a process. And probably at the beginning of this, you're going to suck. <laughs> it's going to not be as good, especially if you come from chronically neglecting yourself and being your own worst enemy. But little by little, you're going to be presented with opportunities for you to practice these things and for you to be your own best friend. How does your best friend, a uh, true honest best friend treat you? And I think about this because I think I, I'm sharing it from my own experience of experiencing beautiful friendships, but what do my friends, I, ways that my friends love on me is that they give me space. They always talk to me with respect. Honestly, they are so proud of me. Um, they have admiration for me. Um, when they have to call me out, they do so lovingly. They really want me to shine. It's not a competition. My best friends know that my gifts and their gifts are differently and sometimes they overlap, but they truly want to see me doing what I do because at the end of the day, they are also they also benefit from it. They also benefit, for example, when I smile. <laughs> they benefit, uh, for example, when I do makeup, I can do their makeup. So they're benefiting when I'm being myself because I am very generous with my gifts and I love that they love me like that. So I really hope that you are able to, if you don't have good friends, that you're able to uh that god sends you amazing friendships because having amazing friendships is so i can't even find the word but good but having friendships it's so amazing to feel in community and to feel safe and to feel like people have your back that no matter where you're at they can meet you right there and assist you, of course, within their capacity because we also have to honor them as well. And yeah, let me see if I'm missing something. See, I'm mad. I am mad because I am missing something. I am missing something. If you guys don't know, I am a web and digital designer. I especially focus on creating web templates. So I'm gonna link my Etsy shop in the bottom, I have two coaching templates, one a career template and one a fitness template. They are absolutely gorgeous. They were crafted with so much research into it to create high selling page. And of course, they're crafted with beautifully colors that go within your industry and that can reflect your personality. And of course, if, uh, if um, you need, if you feel like you will... I am fit for another, another service. You can also contact me via my website or contact me at contact at And yeah, that's about it. I Let me just check in with myself to see if the transmission is complete. I did write it down. <laughs> I did write something down.
I'm not gonna take it away, but going back to dimming your own light, I wrote it down because it was very important for me to express this, but light is not necessarily about being famous. It's about recognizing that you are here to experience the world and you have gifts to share with the world that offer healing. And when you dim your light, it becomes hard for those that need what you have to find you. And that is my last message. And thank you, girlies, for watching this video. I hope you guys and girlies enjoy this video as much as I did. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.